Hello everybody, welcome to Books Are Sick. I am Nick, and today I'm going to give you five books that if you have not read, you should make the time to read this year, because they are five of my favorite books of all time, and I think everybody should experience these at least once in their life. Maybe pick one, maybe pick all of them, and just enhance your year, have a better year because of it. I try to include as many varieties as possible in the short list, so we've got some nonfiction, we've got some horror, we've got some western, and here they are. So first up, we're going with one of my favorite books ever. This is a horror book, but it also has a lot of fantasy elements to it, and that is The Fisherman by John Langan. Now, The Fisherman is a very, very dark book. I will be completely honest with you. It is a very heavy book as well. So as you're reading it, you're probably going to need to take a few breaks and just kind of put the book down, go stare at a wall, and then come back and keep reading it because it's just, it, it's a lot. It's a lot going on. It hurts your tummy, but it's a, it's a great time. It's a great tummy ache. It's the story of two men who are both widowed and they kind of form a bond over fishing. You know, the, the, the book kind of starts off as two guys who are going to just form a friendship over fishing. And that may seem really boring to you. And I would agree, that would have seemed really boring to me. But a tale about a nearby reservoir kind of takes hold of them. And I'm going to leave it at that. Again, it really takes a turn that you're not going to expect. I don't think anyone could ever predict where this book goes. So if you're looking for something that's going to hit you unexpectedly, The Fisherman is a great one. Horror, fantasy, everything. Great book. Next up, we're going with a book that is not short. It is very, very long, and it is a hard one to get people excited for, I think. But please hear me out. It is Lonesome Dove by Larry McMurtry. Now, the reason this is hard to get psyched on is because it is a 1,000-page Western epic. Now, if you had told me, like, hey, I've got this 1,000-page Western epic. I think you're going to love it. I probably would have said... I don't think so. <laughs> I don't, you know, it's not really my genre. It's not really my thing. I don't, I don't know. I, I just don't think so. But then I heard Stephen King say, who, you know, Stephen King, cliche is my favorite. He's my favorite author, say that this is his favorite book of all time. And when you think about how many books Stephen King has read, it's in the, it's in the thousands, probably five, 10,000 books he's read, I would, I would guess. This being his favorite, I think means a lot. And so I picked it up and I read it. And Oh my gosh, <laughs> it is so good. It is so, so good. The characters are just, this is the most real dialogue that I've ever read in my life. The dialogue just jumps off the page into your brain and just feels like a real person talking to you. And um, for that reason, I just felt like I had gone on this journey with all these characters. And by the end of it, we kind of all experienced this thing together. So when the story was over, I was like, Oh man, like it was, it was a really, really big shrug, and I had uh, a big hangover from this book because it was just, it was really was fantastic. I can't recommend this one enough. I know it's a tough sell, a one thousand page Western epic, but please give it a shot. It is worth every single second of your time. A really, truly fantastic book. So next up, I threw in a nonfiction book that is Into the Wild by John Krakauer. This is a book I threw in here because if you're not someone who reads a lot of nonfiction and maybe you want to jump into nonfiction, or if you've read a lot of nonfiction but you haven't read this one somehow. It's a great one. It's a great one for everybody. It's a great starting point, but it's also just a great one if you're an experienced nonfiction reader. I really, really love this book. It's a story that is familiar, and I kind of really resonated with Alexander Supertramp. I know a lot of people didn't really feel that way about him, but I did, and I found this book, as heartbreaking as it was, kind of inspiring in other ways, too. There's a lot of tales in here that are very heartwarming, and the level of research that John Cracker, Krakauer goes into to write his books, the ones that I've read so far anyways, is pretty incredible. He goes to talk with everybody. He talks with people who spent an e just an evening with Alexander Supertramp, just a, even just a passerby. He manages to find these people and interview them and kind of get their experiences uh, of, of what it was like to meet him. <laughs> and um, it's just, uh, yeah, really, really incredible little book. It's not too long either, so you could crush that in a week weekend easily. So the next one is a genre that I don't really read ever, but I love this book so much that I had to include it in here. It's a memoir called I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. And this book was just fantastic. It's not a very long book. It is, it's, you know, took me about three hours to read it. And so for that reason alone, please give it a go. I think you'll be really, really surprised at how good it is. I don't know who Jeanette, I didn't know who Jeanette McCurdy was. I, I kind of had heard about the show, the Nickelodeon show. I've heard the title of it before, but I didn't, I didn't know who this person was and it didn't matter. The story is so brilliantly told. It's, it's very dry humor, very sarcastic, but just very genuine and very, very, again, real. I mean, you got to give it a go. It's absolutely worth your time. It's very, very heartbreaking. A lot of, a lot of heaviness in this one as well. You'll notice a trend here. A lot of these books have heavy elements, just kind of my thing. I like sad stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm glad my mom died, but Jeanette McCurdy is worth every second of your time as well. 
It's it's good. <laughs> it's really good. Okay, so finally, I had to throw Stephen King book in here, obviously, and I'm choosing Pet Cemetery. Pet Cemetery is the most recommended book from me because anytime anyone asks, I want to get, in, I like they ask me, I want to get into Stephen King. I don't know where to start. I always say Pet Cemetery as a starting point, which may be kind of odd because I would say Pet Cemetery is probably Stephen King's darkest book, especially if you have children. So be forewarned if you have kids, which I do. This book will probably hit you a little harder than if you didn't. But the book really is incredible. The story is fantastic. The relationship between the Creeds and the Crandalls across the street is a friend relationship that I just love so so much. And this book will also have you kind of asking yourself, what would I do in this situation? And the answer may not be as easy as you'd expect. I know for me, I was kind of like, well, obviously I wouldn't do that. But then when I really thought about it, it was like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. <laughs> um, I've never seen Pet Cemetery the movie, so this was completely fresh for me. If you don't know anything about this story and you've never read the book, please give it a go. Even if horror is not really your genre, I highly recommend it for the story and the characters alone. And that is going to be my five books that I think you should read this year if you haven't already. If you somehow have not read any of these five, you're in for the best year of your life, I would say. Just pick up all these and read them all and just, and just be the best person ever. You know what I mean? So... Uh, yeah, those will be the five. Thanks for watching <laughs> this video. Uh, love. Love ya.